Gary, what's your assessment of that one today? Well, I think it's in the two halves. The first half, you know, we were off it. Uh, Inverness deservedly were in front. That was their spell in the game. I spoke about that last week. When teams were on top, they started well. We never, and they scored their two goals. You know, I thought both goals were preventable. They were really, really poor from our point of view. Uh, and we knew we were going to struggle at set place just because of their height advantage with the team that we had out, with the people that were missing. That If we kept giving away corners and, you know, the second goal uh, led to that. And then I spoke to the players at half-time, let them know I wasn't happy about that, and I thought there was a real positive reaction in the second half. I thought we were the better team. And we've probably created as many chances as Inverness created in the first half, but as I said to you last week, when they were on top, they got their goals. And when we were on top, they kept us out and we never got our goals. So that's a recurring theme that has to change, really, because because um, if you can't keep a team out when you're on top, you can't score, you're not going to get any points, you know, you don't need to be brainsy brand to work that out. It was credit to the players that they kept going in the second half. I also have to say thanks to the support because it would have been easy when we went 2 0 down so early to turn on the players than never. It's actually probably one of the most supportive that I've actually heard them. And we're going to need them to be like that towards the end of the season, you know. So I said that to the players. I thought they got off lightly for the fans with our first half performance. And they were trying to get behind us in the second half. And to be fair, Rob was just said to me then, their goalies made three tremendous saves. You know, and we've probably missed another couple of chances that we should do better. And we're probably in the first half, even though we, were, we weren't at our best, we had a couple of headers that we'd probably have to do better with as well, at least hit the target or maybe get a shot away quicker. So we had enough chances to score today. You know, I don't think anybody c can say we're not creating anything of that, but we've got to put the ball in the net. It was quite flat in the first half, but as you say, they, they came out in that no, I tried. I wanted it to be a home game to go and try and win the game. So I tried, I played so what you class two out and out wingers, Lyndon and Stephen. And we were wanting to try and get the game, but it went the opposite way. We couldn't get the ball to Fraser and Andy, and they dominated the middle of the pitch. I had to quickly actually change the shape after I think it was the first or the second goal. And that's when we sort of grew into it. So, you know, with the, with the personnel that I wanted to go to a home game to go and try and win the game, we went a wee bit more attacking than we normally would, but it backfired. And, that, and for that 30 minutes, Inverness controlled the game, got their goals, and gave us a real mountain to try and climb. Just say as well, the, the goals, I just, you just need a goal from somewhere. Yeah, it's, I spoke that about the players now. Stephen's gone through a wee barren spell, but he does that in his career at Queen of the South. He can go six or seven without scoring and he hits a run. But at this moment in time, somebody else needs to step up. You know, I think Lyndon's on seven, Josh is on six, and then it's three or four on twos and a couple on ones. That's not enough. So, you know, Stephen's gone through a wee bit of a drought. The chances are falling to him and unfortunately he's not taking them. But we need to help him. You know, he's helped us enough this season. And we as a team need to, when he's no scoring, step up to the plate. And it's what I've been stressing on. You know, this week we worked a lot on, a lot on our attack and playing, trying to create chances. And we did create those chances, but we never took them. Confidence as well? Is yeah, confidence in front of goal and confidence we are defending. Today, you know, I wouldn't have, uh, confidence isn't a word that I'd have said in the last four games. But I thought today, once the first goal went in, the confidence really drained out of us. And Inverness were on top and maybe could have added to their two goals. Then we lifted ourselves a wee bit with some of our chances in the second half. Um, and then confidence in front of goal as well. We don't look confident when we're having a header or we're having a shot. or And that goes through the whole team. So we need to quickly get it back. Um, again, there was a mini test for them there. Because if they didn't have a bit about them at 2 not at half time, that could have been a 4 or a 5. But we did. they done what I thought they would do after getting a bit of criticism. They came out. But we can't start the game at 30 minutes. And if you look at our last three home games, Aloha and Dundee United today, Aloha and Dundee United weren't as, weren't as flat as today, but we've been better in the second half. But if we're wanting to get the points on the board at home, we need to start well for the full, for the play well for the full 90 minutes, not just for the, especially the second half in the last three games. Now, of course, Inverness were up 2-0, really. Yeah, and they could pass it about, and it's very difficult then. They're taking up good positions, and, and we start retreating because we're 2-0 down, and we can't kind of get close to them, and they're dictating the play. But... Even at 2-0 in the first half, we had two or three chances where we should be hitting the target or scoring, uh, and we never. And then, uh, as I say, apart from maybe a few breakaways in the second half where we've really tried to go for it and basically put Big Ian on up front with Lyndon and Dobbs, and they've got us on the counter-attack a few times, we sort of, I wouldn't say we dominated the second half like we did against Dundee United or Aloha, but we were definitely the better team in the second half. And I think if one of the chances go in where... I think Mark Ridgers makes a double save for Stephen, then he tips one round the post for Lyndon, then he tips one round the post for Stephen again. I think all of the chances came within four minutes, about 70 minutes if I was guessing. If one of them go in, it gives us something to really go for in the last 20 minutes. But unfortunately, it's the way it's gone now. The goalie's made two or three really good saves, 
and it's not went in and we've plugged on to the end without creating too many more you know Callum's took his eye off the ball I think at a clear volley um, and we huffed and puffed and after the chances but we had four chances there in that sort of five ten minute spell that one of them really had to go in no Jordan Marshall today as well injury starts no to Jordan mental. hurt his hamstring you know he's probably got to miss next week as well um, Nicky and Josh I don't think will be back and then Alan's felt he's back so he's came off at half time but I thought Jack done excellent and I'll have no problem playing Jack next week I thought he made it a, a natural you know most of his kicking was good he kicked one or two at the pitch he's had to be patient but he made a great save with his feet today uh, so for him you know he's came on and played 45 minutes and kept a clean sheet so if, you know it's definitely given me food for thought for next week it is air next week also on a wee sticky run yeah they are but I don't try to look at other people I need to look at ourselves you know and we, I've got enough enough things to fix here um, and everybody's been very supportive I have to say that the fans to me the board everybody's been very very supportive and I'm grateful for that because we're in a, in a bad run there's no other way to put that um, so I'm grateful for that support but you know as I said last week my job was to get the get the, the four wins or whatever it needs to get us up to over the 40 points you know I think I've not even seen the other results today but I think you know it's got to be very difficult for us to reach the playoffs now I think we're 9 or 10 behind Inverness so you know we have to be realistic because of our recent run that's probably gone um, and we need to now focus on making sure we get the wins and it doesn't become an early last couple of games at the end of the season and that's what we've got to do but as you say you know you could be going into the game next week without Alan, Jordan, Nicky and Josh and that doesn't make it any easier it's not an excuse but I think one of our best performances was away to Dundee I thought Marsh, Nicky and Josh on the left-hand side were fantastic. I've never been able to play the three of them together since that game. And it's a big, big part of our team, how we, where we attack on the left with, with those players. So we're missing that. It's not an excuse. The three players missing uh, shouldn't affect the two goals that we conceded. You know, that's, again, it's individuals making mistakes. And uh, it doesn't matter how many players you've got missing that. That's just the individuals that are on the pitch. And we need to get away from that quickly.